Hello, this is the video for the section 6.5, the logarithmic properties. Now, these properties in your book have some rather long names, so I've shortened some of them. I'm going to talk about each individual one and what it's used for. The first one, logarithm of 1. What it says is log base anything of 1 is always equal to 0. We saw that in the previous video when we were graphing some of the logarithms. The logarithmic identity says that if the base and the argument match, it's equal to 1. This makes sense because a to the first would give us a. The next two properties are what I like to call the canceling properties, and specifically these are used for solving equations. And what it says is that if I have a base and a logarithm in the exponent, and they match, then this entire part can cancel, leaving only the m. The logarithm canceling property is the same, where we have the log on the outside, the base on the inside, they cancel, and you're left with just the m. The next three properties are all about trying to split apart or rewrite a logarithm. In the first one, we have log base a, so any base, but in this case we have two things multiplied on the inside specifically, and we can separate these to log of m plus log of n. So the multiplication on the inside splits apart as an addition. If we have a division on the inside, m divided by n, we can split it apart where there's subtraction. So a division on the inside splits apart as subtraction. One nice way to remember this is if you do have something on the inside, anything in the numerator is positive, and anything in the denominator is negative. So, so you can split these terms apart in that way as well. Anything in the numerator is positive, anything in the denominator is negative. And then the last one, if we have an exponent on the inside of the argument, so here's the argument and there's an exponent, we can pull that exponent on the outside as a factor on the outside. So the r comes out in front, multiplying times the remaining logarithm. These properties are going to be very important, so make sure you get them all down in some way. And we're going to be doing some examples to help reinforce some of these rules. Here are some examples where we're going to use those properties. We're going to write each of these logarithms as a sum or difference and express any powers as factors. So in the first example, a, the first thing I can do is separate the product. Here, we can think of this as log of x times the square root of x plus 1. So we see the product is between the x and the square root. So therefore, we can rewrite this as log of x plus, because it's multiplication, multiplication splits apart as addition, plus log of the square root of x plus 1. Now we're not quite done here because we can rewrite the square root as an exponent. Rewriting this as x plus 1 to the 1 half. That would then allow us to use the factoring property to pull out the 1 half in front of the logarithm. But notice we still keep the parentheses here. That way it reminds us that it's the log of the quantity x plus 1. For the next example, we have a division on the inside of the logarithm. So that means what was on top becomes positive when we split it apart, and what was in the denominator, the bottom, comes apart as a subtraction, or becomes negative. Now again, we can rewrite the square root as a one-half exponent, and that one-half exponent 
will come out in front. Notice how I'm not moving the squared on the x squared plus 1. That's staying there because we don't have an exponent on the entirety of the argument, just on portions of it. So because of that, I can't pull it out. That, that x squared is going to stay there. But the 1 half was on the entirety of the argument, so it got to come out in front. In these examples, we're going to smush them back together. So the first thing for part A, I'll look at the natural log of 7, but that 4 is going to become an exponent on the 3. So reducing this, so far we have natural log of 7 plus the natural log of 81. Well, since we have addition between logarithms, we can rewrite this as 7 times 81 on the inside giving me the natural log of 567. Then using our calculator, the natural log of 567 is about 6.3404. For the next example, we can use that trick about when it, whenever we have a logarithm that's positive, its argument will go on top and when we have a logarithm that's negative, that argument will go on the bottom. But first, we're going to take care of any powers. So the first part, log of x plus 1, will stay the same, but the 2 in front of the log x will become the squared for the x on the inside. Everything else so far is staying the same. Then what I like to do to combine all of these together at once. We're going to take any of the positive logarithms, so the first one and the second one, and we're going to put those arguments on top. So we have x plus 1 times an x squared. The term that has a minus sign We're going to put that argument in the denominator. And just to clean this up a bit, we'll take that x squared through, and that'll be over x squared plus 1, combining those logarithms into a single logarithm. Finally, we get to the change of base formula. Now, the change of base formula says that the log base anything is equal to the log of the argument divided by the log of the base. We have the base here and the argument m here. Now what these b's say is that we can use any other base to convert. Specifically we'll use either our logarithm button or our natural logarithm button. It does not matter which one you use, just as long as you stick with whichever one you're using. So for the first example, log base 5 of 213. Now what that's saying is what exponent on 5 gives me 213? Well, there's no nice x value, so we're going to need to use logarithms. So we're going to use log of the argument, the change of base formula, log of 213 divided by the log of 5. And we'll round that to four decimal places. Now one of the key things is when you plug it into your calculator, make sure you end your parentheses. Oftentimes the logarithm button begins a parenthesis but doesn't give you the end parenthesis. Make sure you add the end parentheses for both the numerator and the denominator. So when I plug in log of 213 in my parentheses divided by log of 5, I get about 3.3312. And that is what log base 5 of 213 is about equal to. If we use the natural log on this, natural log of 213 divided by the natural log of 5, we get exactly the same number, 3.3312, rounded to four decimal places. 
for part B, since the argument actually has E in it, I'm going to use the natural log to do the change of base formula. Using one of the logarithm properties here, our base of our logarithm, because natural log is base E, so base E matches with the E on the inside. We can cancel these. The natural log and the E cancel, and we're just left with 4 over the natural log of pi, which then when we plug that into the calculator and round it to four decimal places, we get 3.4943, about. We could have used the regular log, the common log, and we would have gotten the exact same answer. And so that's the video for 6.5.